okay so we'll start uh, with the docker basics and uh, so docker is basically a container platform like it's a software platform we as i said before like uh, you will use to deploy the application okay so in a very fast and efficient manner so it resolves various issues like uh, the code runs on a developer system but not run, uh, not running on tester or production machine due to some dependencies and uh, so the what is what issues it will resolve me like uh, the code runs on uh, developer machine but not running on production or some other machine because due to some dependencies issue so in docker what we are doing is uh, we are bundling everything like dependencies and uh, binaries everything on a single container so uh, wherever we move the container it will work as it is so and uh, the next here in the software development life cycle there are various stages like planning design feature deployment so in which stage the docker fit like uh, if you ask like then uh, it will store it will fit on deployment docker is used on the deployment uh, uh, stage uh, so the how it works uh, docker like uh, when a developer write the docker file code in order to make the image the docker image from so the docker image We are from the Docker image, we are running the Docker container. So, Docker uh, Docker file is nothing but it's just a file in which a developer mentions uh, uh, like what are the uh, uh, in the binaries and dependencies required for the application to run. So, all those things which need to be mentioned in Docker file. Where from the Docker file, the image has uh, the image has to be created with the help of Docker file, and that image is uh, like read only template that will that can be stored on the Docker Hub. Docker Hub is just a repository, like uh, in GitHub and Bitbucket. It's a uh, GitHub and Bitbucket is a code repository, but uh, Docker Hub is a repository for Docker images. Like uh, in Amazon, uh, Amazon have their own uh, Docker uh, registry image, like uh, AWS, Amazon Elastic, uh, Amazon um, uh, registry, and for Azure, uh, for Microsoft having their own repository manager, like Azure, Azure repository management. so it uh, since it's a docker hub docker hub is a private uh, docker doc owned by docker and uh, so it manage the repo the docker images and uh, from the docker image we are creating the docker container container nothing but it's just a runtime environment of the docker image so when we run the docker container with a so it uh, we can run multiple container from the single image using the single image we can run multiple container so these are all how the docker works so i am And again, the same. The thing is, whenever Docker uh, developer has to write Docker file, and then from with the help of Docker file, creating the Docker image, and then from the Docker image, uh, running the container. This is the flow. And moving to the next thing, like uh, Docker with virtual versus virtualization. So, what's the advantage of Docker over virtualization, like uh, VM virtual machines? So, as you see in the I basically took the took this image uh, from the Google. Uh, so it's a base, uh, host like uh, hardware. The hardware on top of the hardware, we are installing the operating system, and and then installing the hypervisor like uh, hyper VMware or uh, uh, virtual box or whatever the so. So on top of that, we are installing uh, guest OS. So each and every virtual machine requires a guest uh, guest OS to run the application, right? so but in case of container as you see uh, host machine and on top of that there will be operating system need to be installed and then the docker engine so there is no host guest os required for the uh, the containerization to run the containerization so how then the application run how application utilize the operating system uh, so the application uses the base operating system host operating system host uh, os uh, so all the dependencies will be uh, used from the host so in case of uh, virtual machine like you need to give the fixed uh, memory and uh, disk uh, disk spaces 
so in case of container you need uh, you know need to require uh, give the fixed amount of spaces and memory because uh, uh, it will be uh, dynamic whenever the application require the some memory it will be took from the uh, base the base hardware or right? host hardware so it is advantage of container is the lightweight uh, so you can switch from one cloud vendor to another cloud vendor uh, it's a kind of very easy you just need to pull the container from uh, uh, aws from or from aws to azure you can easily migrate those things so it's very flexible fast and everything so as in each uh, as i mentioned already each vm requires separate uh, operating system in case of virtual machine but not in case of uh, a container container doesn't uh, uh, require any operating system uh, since it uses the base of base operating system so then moving forward advantages of using docker as i said uh, there is no uh, no error like uh, it works on developer system not on prod because both the dev and prod are uh, identical in, ter in terms of containerization because uh, the same container you are de developing on the dev machine and the same container will be pushed to the production so there is no dependencies issue and all so the less prone or is uh, identical to no prone for us and dockers will have version control uh, system like jet like uh, you can commit the images and version control them as like uh, jet so as i said uh, in this uh, uh, image like uh, you can once you push the image to the docker hub then one of the for the first time it will be considered as uh, one then again you push the image it will be it will be uh, they, uh, they will consider as two the uh, the image two like that so each and every image uh, it can be version control if you if that if one image is broken you can roll back to previous version so it's a very easy recommendation control them so and then next is isolation uh, isolation is a great feature in docker like uh, uh, one container cannot communicate with the other container Mm -hmm. yeah here you say there here we have uh, four application uh, let's say we have four application so the application one uh, cannot uh, be uh, interrupted to the tra interrupt the traffic of the application two so it will be uh, isolated each and every it will be isolated uh, well, let's say one app one application one is uh, uh, hacked or something so it won't affect the application two three and all rest of the application on the particular docker host so it will be safe so isolation is a a uh, very good feature mm, then faster to deploy application uh, irrespective of the platform being used like uh, you can deploy out uh, any cloud vendor i on an azure aws google whatever uh, then we have a, a play with docker it's just a lab uh, lab to, to try out uh, the basics of uh, the docker commands and all uh, it's here we can see that so one to log in that one we have to create an account then after that you can log into that one Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't see any. Uh, it's dark like anything. Ah, yeah. Now I can see. This can is see? a play with Docker. Is a yeah. Yeah. Can, uh, yeah. Yeah. All these things. Yeah. You can try all the basic stuff and all. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember the credential. I think I forgot that one. This is like uh, Docker Hub. Uh, you should sign in with your Docker Hub account or what? Or the or this is a separate account. You have to create a account for this one. No, it's a separate account. Yeah. Okay, fine.
so this is a playback docker you can uh, try out basic stuff and all on uh, this one so i don't remember the credentials so i'm keeping this one so right. so here from here we can install and uh, we can install the docker What is this? Is this is a different tool or something. Yeah, like Putty, it's a like a tool that Termus Termius called it. Right. So I have already set up this thing. Just uh, launch the uh, server. That it. It's a fresh VM. Nothing is there. Okay, it's like a virtual machine, right? Yeah, yeah. So here we are going to install the Docker. So installation is uh, pretty straightforward. Okay. Just go to the Docker website and uh, for the instruction, we are installing this. We are able to write. So just. Uh, I will create an account. Adding in the user. I'm giving a name as Jenkins user. I will switch to the user. Hello, sorry for interrupting. Yeah. What is the user at Jenkins? You are installing. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, just adding the user into the system. It's a basic one. You need to add that user. Since it's a root privilege, I'm working on root privilege. I don't want okay. to work on root privilege, so I'm uh, access using that Jenkins user. Now I'm switching to that uh, Jenkins user. So Jenkins is also installed in the tower in order to use a Jenkins to work. I'm sorry. Uh, now you're adding, uh, there is a command, right? User at Jenkins dot user. Yeah. Okay. So in order to work uh, that command, you need to install Jenkins or what I'm asking. It's already installed or what? No, no, you can use any user. Any username, just imagine you're adding oh. this user. Okay. So what I did here is uh, just add that user, user uh, Jenkins underscore user, and then I have uh, created a directory for the home directory for the particular user. So under under home, there I will create a Jenkins 
and with the name Jenkins, it just did directly nothing else. And then I'll try to switch that user. Then I am unable to see the directory. So uh, I have uh, used user mod. So in order to uh, assign the directory which I have created over here to the particular user, so I have uh, this uh, user mod. Hyphen D is the directory. This directory I have assigned to the uh, Jenkins user. This user. Now I try to switch to that uh, user from the root and uh, as you can see once again i'm getting into this shell since uh, i need a bin bash so it's a shell only shell so i try to switch uh, up i assign that bin bash shell to the user and then i switch now i am in uh, jenkins user now presently working directly is form under jenkins now i'm i'm installing as per the document over here I will add that uh, HTTP certificate. I think I didn't give the password for the user. Anything. Okay, password is updated. I'll add that user into the root privilege. So the user. I'm giving the Jenkins user as a pseudo privilege. Now it won't ask for the password for the Jenkins user. A right hand quest. Now I'll switch to the Jenkins user and Now I have installed that certificate. I don't hide the key. The top or official key for the uh, just checking the key that way. Adding the thing, then uh, I'm trying to add the Docker, which is a stable version. Only the stable version, I'm going to add it. Okay, that is added. The stable version of the Docker is added into that uh, repository. Now I'm updating again. Updating the repository. And then here I'm installing this Docker C community edition. This is the community edition is the free one. Then we have a Docker app to edition that is one only is community edition that is the Docker C and another is Docker Enterprise Edition, which is paid one. Now it's installing. Okay, I'm going to start. Okay. 
now docker is installed we can check with docker ps now doc okay docker version command we can check now there is a docker client and uh, now it's unable to communicate with the docker server on the uh, docker dot soft so if i try to run the docker ps command ps command is to check the running container so it won't allow you to check to uh, communicate with the server this is a client machine docker has client server architecture uh, now the client machine can access this is a client machine that is clearly of the docker and it's unable to communicate with the docker dot uh, docker server so why it's unable to communicate when we install docker uh, docker uh, it will create a group with the name docker let's check that as you can see this uh, i didn't create this docker group it's uh, by default automatically created when i install the docker uh, docker and install this docker ci so in order to communicate with the docker server uh, docker have some secure limitation like uh, only those uh, in the only those user who are in the docker can communicate with the uh, docker server so right now and as you can see omi is the command which will give the currently logged in user as i am currently logged in as the jenkin iphone user jenkin user so i need to add this jenkin user into this docker group so in order to do so i need to see to user mod command and append group group is the docker group i want to add into the docker group my user is this user so now when i execute this command mean now you can see that the jenkin user which i'm currently logged in is added into the docker group as you can see in the previous command previously i didn't uh, the current using jenkin user is not added but now it's added after executing this command so now if i execute docker ps so it's not uh, come into effect i need to exit and log in back now now none of the container is currently running so if i give a docker version as you can see this is the client machine now it's communicated to the docker server now uh, both the versions are the same and these things so this is this is how we have installed docker and then moving forward docker is so commanded this will list uh, all the information you know, like container no, 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 right now currently none of the no container is running so it's in a zero no, 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 none of the container running call the stop container nothing is there nothing is there currently newly installed one and this is a networking setting storage install native so these are the things and so this is how we installed docker and going back to the presentation you yeah, know what is the uh, image and uh, container so image is basically a template which contain all the information or dependencies uh, required for application to run okay docker image can be created by cli or docker file first uh, we'll see how to create docker image with the help of cli and then we'll move uh, to the docker file okay so docker ps command is to check uh, what all the uh, containers currently running okay so since it's uh, uh, no container is running it will didn't share so anything and uh, first we pull that uh, container docker pull and the image 
So in order to pull the image, I think we don't have any image. Uh, I'm using Jenkins. Jenkins. I'm trying to run the Jenkins container. Oh, sorry, Jenkins as a container in the container. I'll try to run the Jenkins in the container. So we'll move to the. In the explore section, you will find uh, all the images. So I am searching for Jenkins image. So I am taking this one. So this is the official image uh, from the Jenkins. Okay. So Jenkins have uh, officially of course this image. So I am using this official one. As you can see, as uh, 10 million plus pulls have been uh, applied. So, in order to fill the image, you need to follow this command: Docker pull Jenkins dot Jenkins. So, this basically pulled down this image onto our server. Here, we execute this command: Docker pull. Now it is using default tag is the latest. Now if we didn't give any any tag, then it will uh, try to down pull that latest uh, code. So first when we execute uh, Docker pull the command, first it will check for local whether it's locally available or else it will pull down from the server. So as you can see that downloaded newer version of Jenkins for this image, the latest version of this image has been downloaded. Now, can you actually go to Docker? So, in order to check the image, you know, what all the image has been installed on the local list, so you would need to do your Docker images image command. As you can see, here's the image name and the tag is latest one, and image ID, which is automatically and randomly generated, and fix uh, date. Um, also, so I think that if the developer pushed the uh, newly updated one since they ago, the image has been created since they ago, and the sign is five feet in can be five feet can be. Yeah. So now, if you want to see where it's uh, where this image has been stored locally, in which path, I'm going to take you to Docker. So the Docker root directory is this one. Inside uh, warlib Docker, it has been stored. And as you go to this utilization, how much space uh, does this take? So you can check. As you can see, this uh, is consumed for your teammate. So this is how we uh, pull that image from the Docker repository, and then I'm running this image. Docker still there is no container is there here. Once image has been pulled out from the Docker registry, now I'm trying to run this uh, image 
So we call this container, sending the container from the image. So Docker run. Docker run is a command to run the container. It will create and run the container. And I'm mentioning the port as well. Docker run hyphen D. Sorry, hyphen T. T is the port. No, port 8080, colon 8080. Here, uh, the first 80 is the port on the, uh, port on the host machine. And colon, this one 80 is the uh, port on the container. So what it will do is the container, I mean the base machine, this machine port 8080 will be mapped to the container port 80, port 8080. So what all the traffic coming on this machine on port 8080 will be forwarded to the port on container on 8080. So this is the mapping. Uh, this is the first is the container, is the, sorry, host port and second one is the container port. So the, both the uh, map mapping has been uh, done here. And then, and then the image name, image name is this one. So I can read the name as well. I, can, I, can, I, mean, I want to name that container as Jenkins container. Then, yeah, I hit enter. Now it's starting that Jenkins image. Now it is the now it's starting from the Jenkins uh, image trying to run the uh, container. Now here you can see here Jenkins is fully up and running. Now I'll move back to the browser and see. So first I need to get that public URL. I'm running on port 88. Now it's asking me for the password. In the container log, you will have password over here. You can see. You can install it. Please use the following password to proceed to installation. And copy this one and paste it over here. To continue. Now you can install the size script plugin. So the, basically this is how uh, we are doing for uh, CLI installation. I mean uh, running the container from the CLI. Like uh, pulling the image and uh, uh, running uh, or modi modify the image and running the container. Executing the uh, publish command. This is the word publish command. So this is how container works. So I'm stopping this one. To stop this one, I'm executing control, control C. Now it terminated this process and uh, confirmed. Now if you want to again, let's say if you want, to run Nginx or something. Web server, the same process. Now I didn't hear, I didn't pull the nginx image. Now right now I don't have nginx image, but I mentioned this image in the nginx. So now what will happen? First it will check locally whether the nginx image has been downloaded or not. If it's not available, then it can pull down from the Docker registry by default. It was unable to find image locally, so now it's pulling from the Docker hub. Download the new image for Nginx. So latest version of the Nginx has been downloaded and running. As you can see, since I have stopped 
insert a container a jenkins insert you want uh, access that one now and i will to connect Now this is the image which I have uh, pulled down from the Docker hub. As you can see, this is the command that I have created. I think the nginx has been running on port 8080, but I have mentioned 80, so it's, uh, that's why it's not coming up. So let's terminate this. And I will use Web2. I'm giving the name of Web2 and port 8080. Now here, what it means is, all the traffic coming on port 80 on the host machine will be forwarded to the port 8080 where nginx is running on. What is this NGINX? It's a web server. Apache has all Apache that's NGINX. It's just a web server to run the application, like a PHP application. All the web servers nowadays are running on website to run the website and all NGINX are used. Why I'm everything giving the new name is once it will run, we use the name, it will be stored at one because one second I give the same name, it will be said that name is exist. So I'm using the new name. Yeah, let's uh, use some other thing. Instead of NGNX, and I'll use Apache. Both are same, both are web server. Not available. It's typically deep. Patch and HTTP configuring the name. Yeah, I already used that one. Yeah, now it's something that's running. Now when I execute this port eight zero zero command, you can see the Apache is working. It's a web server. Okay, now if I want to stop the web server. I just need to control C. Let's uh, uh, break the process and console. If I want to run that uh, container in the background, I need to just give that hyphen D command, daemon, in the background mode. It will be run as Now 
the main thing is docker ps command it's showing that is apache is running the other name of apache is httpd is just a process name now it's running again about 4 4 second now when you give here you can see running so on 480 it forwarded to the 480 apache actually apache is running on 480 now from the this is the container port and this is the host port start that one again we need to use the same command double start so we will need to do the ps and it's running as well so to check the state of the, all the containers it has been you can see this uh, now it's consume 2.2 meg the overall limit is 4 gig Uh, uh, because the first machine is uh, the fifty server is contain the four gig. Out of it, uh, the Docker is taking only two meg, two point two nine meg. So it will show the container ID and then container name and the CPU utilization, all those things. So, so images as if it is the Docker images come in. One can see we have two meg. One is for Jenkins. Other one we have a full that. In the next, and now it's running a patch. Just get it ready. So these are all things. Um, so these are we have seen uh, this command. Docker image can be created by CLI or Docker file. We will see later that one. Then Docker container is nothing but just a runtime environment. This uh, Docker container, as you can see, is just from the Docker. image we are running that uh, docker container right right we can run multiple container of the same image then sorry docker file and uh, how do so what is docker file docker file is just a simple text file in which we pass all the command required for the application to run like uh, yeah we'll see that one Now I will stop this one. Stop. Now I'm starting. Stopping with this container ready. Now that the PS no no that the container is ready. Right now. Now currently I'm just doing the last part. Okay. Now I will create a Docker file. Sorry, Docker compose file. Docker file and Docker compose are different. Which means in compose file we can running 
multiple containers in a single click like uh, like docker compose start then you can start all the containers we are mentioning all the container information over this in docker compose well, in docker uh, file we are just passing the information of uh, the, all the commands and we have seen how to run that uh, jenkins on docker container now we will write docker compose file So it's basically it's a YAML for YAML format. Docker Compose and everything will be in YAML format. So this is the default name. You have to give this the default name. So it, uh, we can also change that name, but by default it will search for this name, Docker Compose dot YAML. So I will use this as a default only. Now the current version of the Docker Compose is Docker version three. So I'm using the current version, version three, and service name, service. Okay. So we need to give two space. This is a YAML format, and then name your name of the service. You can give anything. I'm giving here Jenkins. Okay. And then. Uh, container name. Container name. You can give the Jenkins container. Jenkins container. Then image. Image image. This. Okay. The name is uh, okay. 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 So the name name is can I can use proper image. And then you can reduce this to something. So you open the Docker Compost file. I can use that one. I can paste that image. Then white port now Jenkins is running on port 8080 so it is the first port and this is the container port both are mapped so after Now to run the compost file. Docker compost. I think we will install Docker compost so it's not picking up. When you hit that, it will pick up the Docker compost. Since we didn't install the console right there of the compose, let's install the one. Install Docker Compose. Docker Compose is to run multiple driver containers. So,
my installation is done. So after that, we are uh, giving the right executable permission where we have installed it. We have our local bin because this file has been installed on. We have our local under bin under Docker Compose. So I'm giving that executable permission. We are not using this one. Now we will execute Docker and we will get tag in Docker Compose. Then we want to check the version. Okay. Now Docker compose. Now to run the file which we have created, Docker compose the YAML. So we will use the Docker compose command. Now to bring up the container which we have declared on Docker compose file, hyphen D is a daemon mode in the background. Always going there like a service name, just not be okay. Now you can see that the network has been created with the uh, default and then creating Docker font in the container has been created. Now if we use Docker PS command, now our new container is running. Okay. And the uh, name of the container is Jensen underscore. And this is the container ID. Now to access this one, now it's running on port 8080. This is the host port and this is the container port. Now the whatever the traffic coming on host port will be forwarded to the container port. Let's access that one. So it is where we report that apply has been done for the minimum. Now I will refresh this one. As you can see. Jenkins has already have started Jenkins. Now asking for the password. Now in order to check, now log, we need to see the password in the log, okay? the container log. Now to check the container log, the command is Docker log. Docker logs. Okay. And then the container ID. So the container ID is the and then we use the first of all, and then we use five five. Okay. So you can see the you know, password of the different things coming with them. It says that for the area, we continue. And install the solution plugin. So it will take four to five minutes to install all this. Code. Then now I have mentioned 
you can launch multiple containers in a single uh, docker compose you can uh, declare or reach in the single machine uh, currently i have declared only jenkins uh, configuration so we can from uh, future uh, videos we can see how to how to do how to deploy multiple containers and uh, how to write multiple containers in a single docker compose then uh, docker value uh, docker value is nothing but uh, we are just no, if we didn't provide the value here we didn't give any value by launching those things. So what happens when we when we launch when we store everything inside this container? When the container is destroyed or killed, so, so the volume also gets killed. So there is no data will be stored, no data will persist. So everything will be gone when we're, when the container is removed. So in order to persist the storage, like database, if we run the, the database inside the container. So in order to store the information, in order to secure those information or database information, we need to use proper value. So we see basic command of proper value. So uh, when you create the Docker image, or when you run the container, it will by default uh, create it. This one, this local is uh, created with uh, some uh, randomly generated name. Since it's mentioning as local, you can't find out Jenkins is running. The, all the information on the Jenkins is stored on which one, uh, which directory. Since uh, uh, this uh, naming convention is not uh, memorable, so we don't know if which, uh, which uh, directory they is. Jenkins has stored this one. So when we remove the Docker container, this volume also will go on. Currently it's showing two containers now. Docker yes. One container is running, and if you give hyphen a, it will list all the containers which are uh, currently, these are all the containers which are ran earlier. So this is currently running, and these are all ran before. Okay, so it will list all the containers which have uh, run, uh, currently running or uh, run before. So if you want to check only the UID of the container, currently running container, you can do the command. So this is the container which is currently running. This is a Jenkins container ID. Yeah. So this one, the top side. This is a Jenkins currently running and if you want to find the idea of the container hyper cube switch. So, so coming back to value. Now if you go to the Docker Hub. Yeah, here you can see the configuration. I may have used and then go to the documentation of how this image has been built. Here you can see who are getting stopped. So, this is where the getting store all the information inside the container, inside this Jenkins container. Now we need to create a value and we need to push, the, we need to pull all the information from the container to the local one. This is the locally generated image. We call it a stored value. We'll create this one and we'll map to this internal one, internal directory. So now this is the directory in which we can store all the information inside this container. What I will do, I will launch a new Jenkins from the same image using command line. Docker one. 
my daemon mode i want to run the injection mode i want and name the injection as jenkin with value jenkin value because i am giving the value information over here i am creating the persistent value for this jenkin uh, and then i get the port so here port 800 is already used so i can't use this port like i have to choose some other port uh, other than this 800 so now i will take it it okay then i will map this port to the jenkin port a0 zero then i will use the uh, same image this image now i will give the value information as well value for persistent and now it's running here again given value information which means if this container is being stopped or if the container has a remove then everything the information which are available inside this entity will be got everything will be got so do so i will do i will create a new gen new container new jenkins container with the persistence value even if it if we remove this one the storage will still persist we can launch the another jenkins instance from the storage now i will give the value information jenkins my okay my value so there is a persistent value so you can store all the information that the container is this one this is the part where the jenkins is there the information set the container so i will do so now the complete command is Docker. I am running that container and creating new container. And uh, hyphen D is the switch branch to run the container in the background. And then name of the container I have given Jenkins underscore value. Then P is the port. Like I uh, will uh, give uh, eight double eight double eight. That port is mapped to the container port on port eight zero zero. And the value I have given, I have created a uh, persistent value. Like uh, a created value with the name bind value my value. And then I have mapped that my value to the uh, directory on the Jenkins where it post uh, where it is store all the information. Now I am running this container with the help of Jenkins this Jenkins image. This is the image of the Jenkins. And so I'm enter. Now I'm checking the log. Jenkins log. Sorry, Docker log. And name of the container is. Now it's not the now it's running it's been up and running yet. Still the let's say Docker PS command. Now you can see two two container is running, two Docker container is running with the same image. Okay. Now one one is running on port eight zero eight zero, the other one is running on port eight 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 and port and copy. So the container ID is different. Every time it will generate new one randomly. The container ID will pick up by the proper. So now we have to do container start. Not started yet. And now the first one is uh, installed. So we have used the name as test. So the password is one two three four five. Test. Okay. Nine seven that you know.
Again, I want to be on the continue also the same. Please serve. Okay. Now you can see the Jenkins is up and running. Okay. Now it's the name of the Jenkins app. Give us test to Jenkins. So the Jenkins is running on port eight zero eight zero, which we have uh, created for enterprise. So let's see the other one. It is up and running. Yeah. Now it's up and running. Now the Jenkins is running on. Which port? This one. Double H, double H. Copy the IP. I'm asking for the password. Installation password. So we we'll use this one. We will install the selected plugins. So now I have uh, this is the early one we have created running on port 8080. One is running on 8088. No, this one doesn't have its persistent storage. No, I will stop this Jenkins. Also, I will stop this Jenkins. Now everything the storage will be gone. Everything will be gone. Let me do the top up here. Let me do the top up here. Anyway, now we should use Docker volume to check what or how many volumes have been created. Docker volume here, yes. Now you can see one is my volume, which I have created for persistent one. So other is his volume. This one. Now I am not sure which uh, this one is. Since it's a randomly generated name. So if I remove Docker, remove this Jenkins. Let's stop it. Stop this one. The Docker which is Jenkins is running on port eight zero eight zero. I stop now. Now it's eight zero eight zero. Yes, you see only one container, only one Jenkins container. It's running on double eight double eight. Now it's running. Get out this page. Can't access this one. Now it's eight zero eight zero. Okay. Now let's check the Docker value. There. Now if you remove that value. All the container. No, the most possible. One. I have to move that container. Now, if I want to start. Now I will list here and now you can find the container that the container has been removed. So storage uh, volume has been found. Now you won't find where the Jenkins has stored their information, which are run on port eight zero eight zero. Then it's a randomly generated one. You can't find that one. So so this is the uh, container. My volume is the one which I have given the name for the Jenkins which are running on port double eight double eight. So this one, so it will be successful. Now all the data is all the plugin information, everything 
will be persistent under this value. So where are the this is the installation of Jenkins uh, from the command line and the Docker file, Docker compose and all. So after from the next video onward, we will. So I think we we'll stop this from here. From from next onward, we can see Docker Swarm. We don't Docker Swarm is nothing but to manage multiple Docker containers either in the same host or we can create a cluster of uh, Docker machine. We can install Docker container on multiple systems. Uh, and uh, from the Docker Swarm, we can control all the Docker containers, like we are managing the cluster cluster of containers. So the Docker Swarm is basically a container management technology, which is used to manage all these containers. So uh, the, we can stop from here. So uh, thank you uh, for your uh, the for here. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, do you have any questions on that one? Okay, so we muted this one. Can we start here? Okay, we'll stop. Thank you. Thank uh you. -huh.